Right now, there's a line of ships waiting to go through the Panama Canal and it's getting longer every day. This is a big deal because it might affect our daily lives. For the past few weeks, several container ships have been stuck in front of the Panama Canal, which is a crucial link in global trade. This canal is a huge 80 km long lane where cargo ships wait to cross from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. It's been around for 100 years. Every year, approximately 14,000 ships rely on this canal, contributing to about 6% of global trade. This route is crucial for transporting goods to stores worldwide. However, there are ongoing challenges that will not get solved anytime soon, including technical glitches, limited space, and most importantly, climate issues. So why is this amazing engineering feat under threat? Well, that's what we'll explore in this video. So stick around till the end because there's a lot of interesting info to learn. But first, let's go back to the late 1800s and meet a guy nicknamed the great Frenchman, Ferdinand de Lesseps. In 1880, he started a company to build a canal connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, south of Panama. It was a bold plan, considering he had successfully built the Suez Canal 10 years earlier. But things went south. The construction site was tough, with jungles, a big hill to cut through, and terrible weather. Workers faced tropical storms, mudslides, and diseases like malaria and yellow fever. It got so bad that the project almost went bankrupt. They tried changing plans to build a canal with locks, but it was too late. Plus, there was a huge financial scandal in France. Investors who thought they were supporting the canal were actually getting scammed. The year 1889 marked a significant downturn for the canal project as the company faced financial ruin, leading to a devastating outcome. Tens of thousands of investors found themselves at a loss, losing their hard-earned money in the collapse of the venture. Tragically, over 20,000 workers paid the ultimate price with their lives during the construction phase. However, even in the face of this disaster, the idea of having a canal persisted. Fast forward to 1903 and Panama decided to take matters into its own hands by declaring independence. In a strategic move, Panama sought support from the United States, forging a partnership that would change the course of the canal's history. The United States, in return for its backing, secured a perpetual concession to build and control the canal, marking the beginning of a new chapter for this ambitious project. Work resumed in 1904 and this time they went for a lock canal idea. Vaccines helped control diseases and the project used a complex system of steam engines and innovative railway engineering. It took 10 years, involved around 40,000 workers and cost the US a whopping $375 million, making it the most expensive project in the country at the time. The completed canal stretched across an impressive distance of 79.6 kilometers, featuring strategically placed artificial lakes and a system of three massive locks. This monumental undertaking stood as a testament to human engineering and determination, representing a significant achievement in connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. However, the cost of this accomplishment was not just measured in distance and engineering prowess. Tragically, an additional 5,000 workers lost their lives during the arduous construction process. The human toll, while a somber aspect of the canal's history, underscores the sacrifices made by the workforce in turning this ambitious vision into a tangible reality. The canal officially opened on April 15, 1914, right when the First World War was starting in Europe. The United States controlled the canal, deciding on the size of the locks, which set the standards for new, bigger ships called Panamax. In the 1970s, there was a plan to give the canal back to Panama, and in 1999, Panama became the owner. Now, the canal is a huge part of Panama's income, making up 10% of the country's revenue. Ships pay fees to pass through, ranging from $10,000 for small vessels to $300,000 for the really big ones. But things are changing. Recently, a chemical tanker paid $2.4 million to skip the line and go first. The canal's model might not be sustainable anymore. The canal works by using locks to raise and lower boats, with two artificial lakes helping out. However, there's a problem. Every time a boat passes through, 200 to 250 million litres of fresh water are lost to the ocean. This usually isn't an issue, but with climate change, droughts are happening more often. Since 2016, Panama has been grappling with recurring droughts, resulting in a consistent decline in water levels across its crucial artificial lakes. Unfortunately, this challenge persisted in 2019 and has resurfaced in 2023. 
The situation is exacerbated by the El Nino weather phenomenon, intensifying the adverse effects of the dry weather conditions. In response to the ongoing water scarcity, authorities are implementing precautionary measures. These include reducing the tonnage of boats and placing limits on the number of container ships allowed to pass through the canal each day. While these steps are essential for water conservation, they contribute to longer waiting times, creating extended queues at the canal. Now, unlike the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal operates on a lock system, requiring the assistance of tugs and skilled operators to navigate through the intricate waterway. However, despite the effectiveness of this method, the canal is currently facing a challenge due to an increasing demand that surpasses its existing capacity. As a result, the waiting times for vessels have significantly extended. Notably, reports in early September indicated a substantial increase in waiting periods, with boats now having to wait nearly 20 days, a stark contrast to the typical four days experienced during normal operational times. Back in 2006, Panama found itself in the limelight as queues at the canal became headline news, bringing attention to the fact that the canal's infrastructure was becoming outdated and insufficient to handle the increasingly large and modern container ships. In response to this challenge, Panama embarked on an ambitious $6 billion expansion initiative in 2016. This significant undertaking involved the construction of new locks, a strategic move that aimed to enable a staggering 95% of the world's ships to navigate through the canal with ease. Additionally, efforts were made to deepen the bed of Lake Gatun by 45 centimeters, a crucial adjustment intended to enhance the canal's capacity and facilitate the smoother passage of vessels daily. Despite the grand scale of this expansion project, it became apparent that it did not completely address the complex issue of water scarcity. The region continued to grapple with drought conditions, and as a consequence, authorities confirmed restrictions on passage for the upcoming year. This predicament raises concerns that, if the expected rainfall does not materialize by November, marking the end of the rainy season, ship owners may be compelled to explore alternative routes such as the Arctic route, further highlighting the ongoing challenges faced by the Panama Canal. The drying up of the canal also affects over 2 million people in Panama City and its suburbs, as the two artificial lakes are a crucial source of drinking water for almost half the country's population. The authorities are aware of the problem, and the canal administrator proposed a solution in mid-September. Creating a new water reservoir to the west of the canal, fed by the Indio River through an 8-kilometer underground tunnel, to address the water shortage issue, a new water reservoir is planned to be built, but this will take some time. Estimates indicate about three months if there's abundant rainfall and almost 2.5 years if the drought continues. There's another possible plan on the table, taking water from Lake Bayano and letting it flow into the sea passage. This could be a solution, but it's not a done deal yet. Before these ideas become real, they need to get the green light from the authorities, secure the necessary funds and be organized into a solid plan. In the most recent announcement from the canal management company, there's a bit of good news. The situation is getting a bit better and boats aren't waiting as long as they were a month or two ago. However, the news isn't all positive. The water level in Lake Gatun is still way too low, more than two meters lower than what's normal for this time of year. This shows that even though there are some improvements, the overall problem is still hanging around and hasn't been completely fixed. All right, guys, that wraps up our video for today. If you enjoyed watching this and found it useful, please do well to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more.